the Literary Club, on behalf of the Shisha team, would like to welcome you all to the Atelier Literaire, the first literary workshop organized by the Literary Club of NIT Meghalaya on account of our Institute's Culture Festival, Shishi 2022. We all have gathered here today to attend this workshop based to enhance the reading and writing skills. I am profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce and welcome the speaker of the event. She is none other than Madame Janvi Bora, a very well-renowned author hailed from Assam. We are grateful to her for accepting our invitation and becoming a speaker for today's workshop. Madame Janvi Bora is well known for her books and her high achievements in literature. She obtained her MBBS at Guwahati Medical College, but does not practice medicine. She studied the creative writing in the United Kingdom. Next door, her debut collection of short stories was longlisted for the Frank O'Connor International Short Story Award. Her novel called Rebirth was shortlisted for the Man Asian Literary Prize and the Commonwealth Writers Prize. Her third novel, Undertow, was published by the Penguin Random House India Viking Books in February 2020. She was also awarded the Charles Wallace Trust Fellowship for Creative Writing in 2006. Her books are on the syllabi of many universities and her short fiction has been widely anthologized. She has molded the life of the students as well as the readers through her books. Without any further delay, I would like to invite Madame Janvi Bora to introduce the workshop on the topic reading and writing from a literary perspective. Please, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you for this lovely introduction. And thank you to NIT Meghana for having me on this show, uh, in this workshop for creative writing. Uh, the topic we decided would be about on reading and writing in general and on writing specifically. And um, uh, Shishir, are you there? Right, so the way I'd like to do it is the, we have a number of students who've joined. They're very happy to see a large turnout. Uh, since it's a workshop, I'd like a bit of interaction, a bit of um, uh, talk from the participants as well. Is there any way you can take uh, questions and take answers and we can interact? Is that possible? Right. Right. So what I'll do is I'll probably have some questions too, because it's a kind of interactive workshop. And um, when I teach um, children, when I teach adults, I'd work, I used to tutor in uh, the British Council. I have some questions to start the workshop with, so to, to understand what the students want also. So uh, without any further ado, let's start the workshop. And we're going to start with reading. So um, when you talk about fiction or writing, we tend to jump straight into how do we write? Uh, what is good writing? Uh, how do we write a short story? But what we need to understand is before that, there's a very big um, effort we have to make in that how to read well. Uh, I always use this example of, um, of eating in that um, you want to be a good cook. But if you're not a good eater, if you, if you don't eat well, if you don't know what you like, if you don't know what appeals to you, um, you're probably not going to be that good a cook. So if you want to cook, you have to start with eating. You'll have to eat widely. You'll have to eat many kinds of cuisines. You'll have to understand what you like. You'll have to understand what makes one particular dish work for you. What is it you like? What is it you don't like? So similarly, before writing, you need to become a good reader. Uh, it's fine to read for entertainment, and um, like we watch a movie for entertainment, but if you want to seriously get into writing, you have to seriously get into reading. So I'm going to put the question to the assembled um, students here uh, and ask you, why do you read? And um, feel free to answer, and please answer in large numbers. Shishir will convey the answers to me, and that's where we'll spark off the talk. Why do you read?
Is anybody answering, Shishir? I have Vicky saying, because we need to. I have Siddharth Kumar saying, to get information. Anyone else? Because I love reading. Why do you love reading? Can, can you elaborate on that? I have someone saying, it's a hobby. It feels good. OK, why does it make you feel good? Can you elaborate on that? To expand my ideas about certain aspects. Very good, Vasundara Singh. Any more answers? Why do you like to read? Why do you read? Boost my serotonin. Very good, Shubham. Information without any disturbance. Very good. It's a private activity you can indulge in and reward yourself with. Yes. Any other answers? To understand other people's perspectives. Very good, Ajit Kumar. Shibam Pandit, learning something which out of my course. Very good answer again. To expand my vision, Harshit. Yes. Anyone else? Any further answers? Any different answers? For experience and knowledge. Yes. Vitharaj. Anybody else? Anyone else? To connect. Very good. To connect. Ajit Kumar, to connect. Yes. Good answer. Any more answers? Maybe a last couple, then I'll take it forward, the talk forward. Enhance imagination and creativity, absolutely. Vasundara Singh, good answer. Just one more answer and we'll take the talk forward. Anyone else? Right, I think we've got enough answers. So to keep your brain active, very good, Rafi. To get a different perspective, to increase vocabulary, fabulous, very good thinking. Good. So as you see, we've had a wide variety of answers. And if you want to bring them together and boil them down into certain categories, uh, what has come about is, is to know about different things. Yashraj Gupta said, to know about different aspects of things we don't know about. So I think that's the first thing anyone reads for. As a child, uh, when you first, a first reader, when you first begin to read, the first thing we read for is to experience something different. We read to leave our world and immediately jump into another world which is different from us. That's, that's the appeal, right? It's, it's why we watch a film. It's uh, why we travel, is to enter a different world from our own world. And writing, reading, is the simplest way to do that. You open the pages of a book, the first line, the first chapter, and you're in a different world. So one is to experience a new world. Somebody then said, is to see things, is to connect. So the second thing would be, we read to connect. We read to connect with what is out there. And what is out there? It's just a book. You may say it's just a book. It's, it's from the imagination. It's, it's a fictional piece. So do we really connect with anybody real? What do we connect with? But when you read, you'll find that you do connect, number one, with the writer. Someone said here to connect with the writer. Number one, you're reading somebody else's thoughts. And immediately, there's a sense of engagement with the person behind the book. That is, first of all. Secondly, you connect with other readers. You may or may not feel it while you're reading. But let's let's take the example of, let's say, um, Murder Mysteries, Agatha Christie. We've all read some in our, in, our, in our lives. She has such a huge fan following, Miss Christie. And once you've read her book, you're connected to every other reader. There is some way somewhere in different parts of the world reading the same book that you're reading, enjoying the same experience, appreciating the same thing. You become part of this network of readers. It's, it's like an invisible current around the world. You become part of this network of readers who read the same things you do, appreciate the same things you do. In a way, you find fellowship. You suddenly feel you're not alone. So connecting. The third thing you connect with when you read is you literally connect with other parts and other people in the world who are present in that book. You read a book about Australia. For the duration of your reading, 
you almost feel you're an Australian. You're almost walking in those people's shoes. You learn about that. Even if it's a book, work of fiction, it's not a textbook, it's not geography or history, but you learn about the seasons, you learn about what people do, what are the sources of, it, of entertainment? What do people do on a Friday night, let's say in Melbourne? Uh, what, what is their culture? What are the burning issues they are facing? Just from a piece of fiction, sometimes just from one short story, you understand so much more about another culture. So you connect at that level too. So connection. So you need to step into a different world. You need to connect with the author, with other readers, to connect with other cultures. And believe it or not, after you've got into the habit of reading intelligently and reading well, you connect with yourself. Reading actually throws up a mirror in which you see yourself. You understand a lot about yourself. And if you have not read for a long time, um, you may not appreciate it. If you're a new reader, as I'm speaking today, you may not understand this particular point. But as you read, or if you've already been reading since you were a child and you have a big body of reading behind you, uh, or when you have enough reading behind you, you will understand that reading teaches you about yourself. Now you can ask me, how? How can you say that? Why do you say reading connects you with yourself? It's because as you read, certain different emotions rise up in you. Other emotions which were vague and not very well defined become crystallized in you. I'll give you an example. Um, let's say you're reading a book about orphans in Africa. So far, you never thought about orphans. You're part of a happy family. Um, you've had a decent childhood. You, you're enjoying your life right now. You've never thought about orphans. It's, it's never really come in your purview. You read a particular novel or a short story, which is about a child uh, who lost his parents in a conflict in Africa. There are many, many conflicts which happen there regularly, who's left alone to fend for himself. And you begin to empathize with the child. You're walking alongside with the child. Uh, you see his point of view. You learn to empathize. And suddenly you have this awareness of people less advantaged than you. Suddenly you look out of your little um, cozy little world and you look out and you notice somebody in the neighborhood. Maybe it's a small child working in the corner shop who doesn't have parents. And immediately you feel the same empathy, the same uh, little spark of um, feeling, care, concern for that little child, which you may not have felt the last time you went to that shop. This has happened because you've read a book You've read a short story which put you into that child's shoes. And then you realize that, hey, um, I thought I was a pretty carefree person. I thought I didn't care about anybody much. But guess what? I, I, I care for these children. So if you read well, you'll find little things, little uh, traits of yourself that you learn to recognize. Some things which you may not have been very clear about, for example, state of war, Ukraine and Russia at war now, and you're feeling concerned and worried. But uh, you didn't really know how to express your emotion until you read a short story about a particular family who's lost a child, let's say, in Kiev. And you, you can put your whole concern, your emotions into words. You understand what it feels like to be in the center of conflict. So reading really connects you to yourself. You learn things about yourself. You learn that you're capable of deep feeling. You learn that you're capable of empathy. You're capable of caring. But perhaps earlier you thought um, you were this very carefree person who didn't really care very much about anything else but yourself. So reading holds up a mirror sometimes. It forces you to examine issues. You read a book about, uh, let's say, um, some injustice happening in, in, in um, some part of Canada. And um, you suddenly say, yes, that's, that's wrong. Um, I think it should have been done this way. This is not right. It, it teaches you to confront issues. It teaches you to uh, examine issues and crystallize your emotions. So in a way, reading connects you to yourself, right? So, so far, what have we gone through? We've gone through very rapidly to the fact that you read because you want to enter a different world. Uh, you read because you want to connect and you connect with, at different levels with different um, issues and people and places. Um, you also connect to firm your perspective. Someone said that when, um, when I asked the question about why do you read? And uh, yes, reading exposes you to other perspectives. It uh, helps you form your own perspective. It influences your own perspective. And um, you tend to see things in a, clear, in a much clearer light than before you read something about it, right? Um, of course, for entertainment. Uh, in my time growing up, there was no television. There was no social media. For us, books were the only way we could travel quickly. Uh, there was no travel. There was not uh, frequent flights like today. It was 
tough to get into to get to other parts of the world so for us opening a book was at one go like uh, a holiday a uh, piece of entertainment watching a film uh, learning new things connecting with new people learning new words so all that and more one gets from reading so um, this is what reading can bring to you I, i think in a way reading really helps you grow as a person it um, helps you grow as a person and, and if i may say so it's my belief but it really helps you become uh, a better person not better um, better in a moral sense also better in a sense of growth because you learn so much more you certainly evolve reading absolutely enriches you um, so um, the first critical thing to wanting to be a writer is to be a reader secondly how would you be a better reader than you are today i'm sure all of you read books and here again is a question to you to the audience um, you read you probably read casually you haven't put that much thought into it how do you think you can become a great reader which are the aspects of reading do you think you need to look at again i'm going to wait for answers and then interact with you how can you be a better reader any answers none coming up from the ones who answered before interest makes better readers okay take an interest in the topic that you're reading in anything else expanding vocabulary okay that is a, that's probably an effect of reading well your vocabulary will expand will increase but how can you consciously when you read how can you consciously make yourself a better reader curiosity yes connect with text yes anything else coming up empathy yes imagination these but these probably are things which will happen consequent to your good reading try to understand the writer's emotions yes about what they're writing identify a purpose and set reading goals yes definitely reading with a purpose definitely read what you like best yes great good answers so we'll take it off from here so let me start with saying there's something which none of you have said uh, is reading widely please read a lot read as much as you can and read in all different genres don't don't feel uh, constrained that you have to read only a particular kind of fiction for example i write what we call literary fiction uh, the so called more serious books the more literary books uh, on the table but please feel free to read whatever you want read crime read thrillers read um, romantic fiction read non fiction um, read um, um, humor read serious books read war read about geography just read it's it's the same example about eating what i told you is that eat widely how will you know what you like unless you eat widely if you stick to the same food maybe the same food you cook at home you'll never know what your tastes are you'll never expand your vocabulary of food so similarly for reading please begin by reading widely read everything read a lot there will come a point in time where you will form an informed taste you will have an informed opinion about what you like after eating voraciously all kinds of cuisine north indian south indian assamese bengali chinese italian you probably figure out that okay i probably like southeast asian food the best but that's after a lot of exposure to different kinds of cuisine so please read widely so that after a certain age at a particular point in time you understand what your taste in literature is what your taste in fiction is and okay i enjoy comedy no i enjoy murder mysteries uh, i like uh, serious fiction i like literary fiction it's so only after exposing yourself after taking the trouble to read widely and vastly and deep you understand what your taste is secondly to be a good reader engage with the text one of the children here said um, engage with the text very good answer engage with the text text beyond the superficial level of just enjoying the reading if you really seriously want to go into any form of writing or literature uh, as a source of future work or future interest please engage very uh, deeply with the text uh, try and read below the surface try and go into things like uh, for example uh, films 
we watch films for entertainment, right? But there are some of us who may be future filmmakers. And already as they're watching films, these people are analyzing the opening scene, the closing scene of the film. What has the dialogue been like? What has the lighting been like? What are the colors used? Um, they are engaging with the film in a deeper, more meaningful way than we are simply watching it as entertainment. So similarly for reading, if you are serious about reading, you want to become a better reader, please engage with the text at a deeper level. I'll use a short story as an example. It's very hard to talk about the novel. It's a much bigger thing. But if you're reading a short story, look at aspects like what has been the mood of the story? Is it a happy story? Is it a cheerful story? Is it a story about a struggle and a challenge and then success at the end? It is, a, uh, is it an uplifting story? Engage with things like uh, the opening scene. What was it like? What did it make you feel like? Um, what does it say about the story? What do you think will happen beyond that? Engage with the closing. How did the writer close the story? Uh, did you enjoy it? Was it skillful? Did it leave you satisfied? Engage with the level of dialogue. Did it feel credible to you? Sometimes I read a short story or a piece of writing where the dialogue feels very artificial. And immediately my interest from the book or the short story just lifts. I feel I'm not interested. So engage with the dialogue. Is it feeling that it's normal? Is it credible? Is it authentic to you? Uh, engage with the characters. How has the author built up the character? Does the character feel credible to you? So read. If you want to become a serious reader, read critically. Having gone through these steps of reading critically, you'll find you become a better writer at the end of it. So this is about reading. This is about reading, about reading widely, deeply, reading um, with a sense of engagement, which helps you um, achieve something, to, to gain, obtain something positive from a piece of writing, wherein you can use that knowledge to take it forward in your writing. So uh, let me put this to you, all of you here today, is that uh, how many of you are actually interested in writing? Have you written before? Um, do any of you see it as a potential career, or is it going to be a hobby? Um, how do you view writing? Again, I'm going to wait for answers before I engage with you. How many of you want to be serious writers? Only to academics, OK? Fair enough, because it's anyway enough on your table, enough on your plate, I'm sure, to study. Anybody else? Anybody writes for a hobby? Anybody sees yourself as a future writer or in journalism or to write content for films? Does anybody want to be a writer? Hobby, that's good. Hobby, that's good. It's still a good hobby to have. Somebody wants to do, Julisa wants to do creative writing and poetry writing. That's good. So that's with a slightly more serious intent. Yes, somebody else also wants to take it up in some form. Somebody wants to write but gets bored. Okay, then maybe you need, you need some pointers as to keep your interest engaged. Okay, so what, what I've understood is um, a few of you um, want to write only as far as your, your academics is concerned, your syllabus is concerned. That's fair enough because it's a lot of work for us anyway. Some of you want to write it as a hobby, take writing up as a hobby, which is also a good thing to do because it's uh, a creative hobby which keeps you engaged, stimulated. And for somebody else who said that possibly she would like to someday do creative writing and poetry writing. Okay, so for... Um, all of you out there, in whatever form you want to write, let's look at writing. Let's look at the, there's not much time today we have, it's just an hour. Normally when I do writing workshops, um, I do it um, over sometimes five weeks, like twice a week, two sessions a week. But uh, this is going to be just a small capsule. So let's take the short story as an example of how to begin to write and let's learn how to, in brief, write a short story. You can, um, with whatever little I teach you today or tell you today you can possibly begin to write short stories or begin to write longer novels or films or whatever it is you wish to go on to ahead. So let's talk about writing a short story. Um, a short story has many, many elements. Again, I sometimes related to cooking and eating because that's a simple thing to do. It's like making a curry. A curry has so many ingredients, but some very basic ones and some basic processes which we must follow 
to be able to make a successful curry. Similarly, in writing a short story, we have a few elements which are very basic to the short story. Uh, you need to know about it, and you can mix it up in different ways. You can uh, mix up the ingredients, the quantities, vary it as you see, as you wish to. But you need to understand what these elements are. So if you ask me what a short story, can anybody tell me what you think are the elements that go into making a short story? I'm sure all of you have read a short story at some point in your life. So what do you think are the elements important in a short story? It's a quick round of questioning. And I want a quick barrage of answers so I can take out from there. What, in your opinion, are the elements that make up a good short story or any short story? What are the basic elements? Potential writers, come up, give me quick answers. Initiative for thought, OK. You plan the short story. Akash Manju. Anybody else? What are the elements, pillars? Absolutely. Storyline, Janavi Karshya, Peldan, characters, plots. Directly connect to the point, yes, to be authentic, to be crisp, precise, good. Any others? We've almost got them all, a couple more. Leaving readers with a question, yes, that is the whole intent of fiction, yes, to make people think. The theme, very good. Character development, very good. Theme, point of view, setting, Ritraj Day, very good. Setting, yes, absolutely. Conflict, yes, absolutely. Good, I think we've got all the elements covered. You guys are going to cook a good curry, I think. Right? So let's start with, let's, let's start what the elements, what the pillars, what the ingredients that are going to make this curry for us, a short story for us. So the very first thing would be uh, something which is not a tangible thing is intent. What do you want to write about? I think without that intent, without that planning, that strategy, if it just begin to write, it's going to fall flat. So intent, what is it that you want to say? And with that intent comes something very important. It's called your voice. And that is something that can't be taught. You can't learn that in a workshop. You can't learn that in a syllabus. It is uh, a very spontaneous thing a lot of creative people have in that what is it they want to say? What is this filmmaker trying to say? What is this artist trying to say? Why is that all of us are not artists and creative writers or um, filmmakers or artists? Because all of us don't have that clear intent, we don't have that clear voice, we don't really know what we want to say, or we may not have something to say, that's fine. We live life within our little latitudes and longitudes, right? So you figure out what is it that you want to say. In a way, that is something called um, theme. What is the theme of your story? Uh, it's a story about maybe exploitation of um, laborers in a jungle. That's my theme today. So you figured your intent out for your story. Uh, my theme is about a child losing a parent. So my theme is about loss and separation and grief. Uh, my theme is about someone wanting to do well, get admission into medical college, struggles a lot, finally gets in. This is a story about someone struggling against challenges and then making it in the end. So think of your theme first. Having thought of what you want to say, now comes the physical pillars of the story. You have to construct the story, right? So the main, the very first element would be setting. I think somebody there, Janavi Kashyap, said setting. The very first thing is a setting. Try and look at a short story like a play. I look at it like that. I'm a very visual writer. I set the stage first. I need a stage for my characters to walk on to, to enact the whole story. And what is my stage? My stage is my setting. And what is my setting? My first setting is place. As all of you know, when you read a, a story or a novel, the first thing that you get a sense of is where is it set? Even if it's set in outer space, you want to know that. Then you want to know, is it set in India? If in India, is it in a city? If it's in a city, which city? In a city, which part of the city may be? And then you go into more specific settings, what we call social settings. Is it a story about something in a school? Is the story set in a workplace? Maybe some office conflict. Is it a story set in a marketplace? So I have to set my setting. To set, to set my stage, to write my setting, um, it's not that simple. I can't start the story by saying, OK, in a marketplace, in Shillong. Uh, you don't start like that. You start much, much more subtly. So I might start a story saying, um, I live in Bangalore, so I'll use Bangalore as an example and say that uh, I was driving past Gavan Park and I saw the jacaranda trees in bloom. Um, we have a lot of jacaranda in Shillong, too. And I think around the same time in spring they flower, we get jacaranda in Bangalore in February. So by Saying that jacaranda is in bloom, 
and I'm driving past them, I'm saying that it is February. So the setting, see, uh, sorry, I missed that. Setting is not just place, setting is also time. Which season is it? Which part of the year is it? Is it cold? Is it hot? Mm. Setting is also a mood. You have to set the story in, um, is it going to be a happy setting, happy family story? Is it going to be a difficult setting, a difficult office conflict story? So all that comes into setting. So you start your story by saying, I was driving past Govan Park. I saw the jacaranda trees in bloom. Now, without saying it really, I've already said I'm in Bangalore because Govan Park is a big part of Bangalore. I've already said it's February because the jacaranda is flowering. And I've already kind of given a foresight, a hint, that it's going to be a fairly happy story because I'm talking about jacaranda and bloom. So when you foreshadow a story, when you set a story with uh, something bright in the first sentence or in the first scene, more or less, a writer tries to tell you that this is going to be a happy kind of story. Otherwise, I would have said, um, I'm on MG Road, Bangalore. I'm stuck in a traffic jam. Immediately, I'm hinting to the reader, this is going to be a difficult story about obstacles. So you do see how minute a detail a writer has to get into. If you think about writing, you just you tend to ignore that line about seeing a tree in bloom. But the writer has thought through to the extent that He's telling you about the season, he's telling you where he's located, he's telling you how which way the story will go. So as a good reader, you need to pick this up when you're reading a short story or a book or watching a film. And as a good writer, you need to put these little clues, it's almost like detective work, into your story. So the very first thing is setting. Setting in terms of place, setting in terms of which location you are setting in, in an office, in a school, at home, in a restaurant. Setting in terms of time of the year or time of day, is it a morning story, evening story? Setting in terms of mood, of atmosphere, and of theme. Is it a grief-struck story? Is it a happy story? Is it a love story? And setting, you can write right through to the last scene. It doesn't mean that in the very first story you say, I'm walking up a hill, I'm near Loretta Convent, this is Shillong, uh, this is winter. You don't have to say it in the very first paragraph. You can build it in your story as you go along. Right? So setting. The second pillar for me would be, this is a toss-up. Some writers are very, if you read a book or a novel or watch a film, you know the certain stories deal only, are very plot-driven. The plot becomes central to the story. These particularly in the genres of fiction, cri uh, crime fiction, mystery fiction, thrillers, the plot becomes very important. It becomes what happens, what happens, what happens next, because that is the flow of the story. Then there are those quieter, more reflective stories, but where it's a character-driven story, where it's about um, a character's journey, a character's struggle, a character's feelings. So the next pillar could be plot or character. For me, it would be character. So your next pillar you need to build up in a, in a short story is your character. So decide on the number of characters you're going to have. You're going to have one main character, what we call a protagonist, and you're going to have other minor characters around it. Sometimes you can have even two main characters, two protagonists. Uh, maybe it's a hero, anti-hero story, Superman, Batman against an evil character. So, you know, it becomes a double protagonist story. Decide on your characters, decide on your protagonists, decide on the other characters and build them up so well, it's as if you're living with them. So this is uh, something a lot of writers do and I certainly do in that I build my characters up, up over a long period of time. I get to know them in almost every little aspect. What are their motivations? What is character all about? What, is, what does he or she want to achieve in life? What are the struggles in life? I, liked, I also get to know what, what are the favorite foods, what's the favorite song, what does it like to wear, um, or, or what his first um, book was that he read. You don't have to put it all out there in the story, but knowing your character in depth, building your character up like this, helps you build such an authentic character that the reader will absolutely resonate with a very well-rounded, well-built up character like that. So this is the second element, the second pillar of writing a short story. The third one would be for me plot, or could be second at the same level, two pillars, plot, character, side by side. A plot is the journey, the narrative arc of the story. The plot is what happens in the beginning, what happens then, what happens after, what how it ends. But remember, you don't necessarily have to start from the beginning. I'm sure you've all read stories, but it starts with the end. That this morning, I close my bank account. This morning, I locked the gate of my house for the last time. And then you go into a backstory. Then you go into why have you locked your house up? Why have you closed your bank account? That could also be a story. So the plotting is a very big element. And for the plot, what you need to remember is 
as a writer, you need to know the whole arc. You need to know the beginning and the end. You need to know where your story is going. You can't leave it loosely. You can't say I'll figure it out as I go along. Maybe it does happen sometimes you're lucky, but um, it usually works better if you get your entire journey plotted out before you begin your story. Keep your pace up. Don't let the plot um, be careful in um, continuity of plot. Don't say one thing in the beginning, say it's summer, and say it's winter, summer later on. It does happen with some uh, inexperienced writers. Um, don't uh, leave too many loose ends in the plot. Try, try and make sure it's all tightened. That doesn't mean you have to have a tight ending. There is this concept of an open ending where you bring the plot to an end, uh, to a final resolution, but it doesn't have to be a tightly wrapped up, it's going to happen this way only end. If you've read any of my books or any, any of my short stories, you will see that I love an open ending. I love giving the reader a chance to explore the possibility of two or three things happening, and each one could be credibly happening, really. So uh, that's plot for you. Another, the fourth pillar, very important pillar, somebody mentioned, I think Janavi Krishna mentioned, conflict. For a story to work, a short story to work, it's like the engine of a car, you need conflict. And by conflict, I don't mean war, I don't mean like uh, you beating your neighbor up or you know, you having a big fisticuffs with your father or your brother. Conflict in, in creative writing is a different thing. Uh, conflict is that tension. Conflict is that reason the story exists. And conflict, technically, we have is of three types. We have um, something called man versus nature. These are the stories where a story of a flood, a story of an earthquake, um, where man battles nature, uh, is, is one of the conflicts very much, very often used in, in, in Shastri or any other creative writing. There is a man against individual, man versus man. It could be um, two neighbors having a fight. It could be a mother having some unresolved tension with a daughter. That's what the story is all about. That's man versus individual. Then we have stories of man versus society, uh, where let's say a man battles institution in society. Let's say a man uh, wants to get into a particular college, but is being prevented from entering. So and the story is about that, just man versus society. Then there's man versus himself. Uh, you have issue. You you, ha you are facing a particular challenge. Uh, you want to uh, become a doctor, but you are afraid of the sight of blood. How are you going to overcome that? That's a story about man versus yourself, about you challenging yourself and meeting your inner challenges. And of course, the larger stories of society versus society, the big stories, Russia, Ukraine, war, uh, that sort of story. So these are the various conflicts which you can center your story around. And no story without a conflict is going to work. If you just have a bland, happy story of everything happy, we went on a picnic, we had a good time, we came back home, no one, let me tell you, is going to be interested in reading that story. So you have conflict. So, so far, the elements were your setting, very important, your characters, very important, your plot, very important, conflict, very important. Beyond this, we have certain little minor elements, like what I call the, the sugar, the icing on the cake, the Hershey sprinkled on the cake, the design on the cake. The minor ingredients could be things like um, pay attention to elements like dialogue. If you're writing a story set in a particular area, if you're writing about a story set in Delhi, make sure that make sure the dialogue is very authentic to how people speak in Delhi. If you're writing a story based in Shillong, make sure it's uh, very authentic to how people speak about in Shillong. Um, be very careful of your mood of your story. If your mood has been a somber mood, it's going to be a sad story. Don't need, don't suddenly change it to a cheerful tone later because it's, it's going to um, jar a bit in the writing and the reading of it. Uh, be very careful with other minor elements like your opening line. This is a very major element in which you hook your reader in. There are very famous lines in novels, um, which we remember till today. Uh, Charles Dickens, best of times, worst of times. Um, so your, your first line is a very big element that you need to focus on. Your, your closing line, your closing scene, as I would say, another very important element to focus on. Um, to give the story that final punch how, is how to bring it down. Now, in the writing of a story, structurally, and I'm saying it very quickly because I don't think we have that much time left, we have um, the, the short story particularly is like a kind of lopsided pyramid. You open your scene, you take the pace up, you go up to a climax, and then the climax drops down into a resolution, into a closing. So if you're going to write a short story or even a novel, remember that sort of pyramid going up two thirds and then coming down steeply in the last third of the book. So that's that's the, basically the physical structure of how we write a short story. So at this point, um, I'm going to stop and ask if you have any questions about any of the elements that I've touched upon now. 
I'm sure there are plenty, so I'm looking forward to hearing. Any questions about the short stories, various elements, setting, how to build character, how to build setting, how to take the plot forward, what is conflict? Come, I'm sure you have some thoughts around it. This is after a workshop, remember, we need to like interact on this. Akshat Chaudhary asks, how do you know when it is a good point to bring in the conflict part in a story? Uh, we have to not write about things which can hurt other feelings. Yes, this is this is to keep in mind when you're writing this. Do not hurt people's sentiments when you're writing. How to bring in conflict? Akshat is right almost, if you can, from the beginning. The conflict in a story has to be clear almost from the beginning. Huh? You cannot introduce conflict at the end because what are you writing towards? So if it's, if it's a... a, a, a uh, let's say a uh, fracture, a uh, uh, difficulty between father and son, bring it out in the first sections. So we understand the stories about uh, this difficulty between father and son. Then we look forward to seeing how that goes. Does it come to a resolution? How does point of view affect the meaning? Oh, good question. So we didn't address one of the one of the elements in a short story, Rithyas, thank you there, is point of view. So as you're writing a short story, along with deciding the setting, the how to build character, how to take the plot forward, how to build conflict, you have to physically decide what point of view are you going to use. What do I mean when I say point of view in a short story? I don't mean point of view like how do you feel about uh, um, world conflict? How do you feel about global warming? Not that. I mean, are you going to write the story in first person point of view? First person point of view is that I story. It's when you start a story in the I form. I went to school today. I met a man along the way. The man gave me a lollipop. I took the lollipop, but there was something else mixed in it. I had the lollipop and I fainted. That's an I story, first person point of view. And this particular point of view is very easy to work with because you almost are walking in the shoes of the character. So most young writers, uh, new writers will start with the first person point of view. The other very common point of view is a third person point of view. It's a he, she, they story. That's also a very easy point of view to write on. Um, he took a flight. When he landed, he found he left his passport behind uh, in Delhi. The plane was descending to London and he didn't have a passport with him. I mean, if it's possible, and that sort of story. That's a he, she point of story. Another point of view story is a you point of view, wherein you address the, um, the story. It starts with you were walking, um, in, um, you were walking on the street. You found a wallet on the footpath in front of you. And you thought to yourself, should I pick it up? This is kind of a third point of view, which could be two ways. You either uh, addressing somebody else or you addressing yourself. It's, it's kind of an I in a disguised form. Or the other clear you is when you're writing, let's say, Dear Diary. You will be amazed today I met the most wonderful person. So that's another you point of view. So these are the points of view. Uh, Dhritaraj, you had a question about the points of view. What was the question, if you don't mind repeating it? For the point of view question. Okay, so let's go on to other questions you have about the elements. I've had one question about when do I bring in conflict? Uh, another one saying that um, we shouldn't bring hurt people's feelings. Any other questions about these elements in a, in a short story? About the various pillars of a short story, any questions? Anyone else? Right, so we, I'm assuming people have understood about the various elements that go into a, into a, into a short story. Um, so what what one usual, what, what I would actually like to do is to hear from you now, and uh, a little bit, because I think all of you would have at some point definitely read some short fiction, um, especially the ones who've interacted so far, is to come out and tell me about your, your favorite short story writers or short stories that you've read. This is for me to gain an understanding of um, what, what is it that you like, what do you like reading? Well, what are your favorite authors? Please come up and respond because unless you engage with me, again, this is a form of engagement. I'm not able to engage back with you. Anybody, anybody who's read short fiction, I'm sure all of you have. What's been your favorite short story writer and why and what, what short stories have you read? Anyone? 
Anyone there? Kabir Das. Okay. Manish Tube, um, what kind of short stories is he, does Kabir Das write and what, what is it that excites you about them? Can you tell us a little more about that? Anyone else? Other other favorite short story writers, Indian writers, international writers? Aesop's Fables. Very good, Elisa. What what is it that you like about Aesop's Fables? There's something we've all read growing up, right? Uh, the thing that I like about the Aesop Fables is that in the end of the every story, there's a moral lesson. Yes. So this is the classic example of using short stories to teach us something, right? So this is what. A lot of our um, fables, a lot of our folklore, a lot of our religious sorceries tell us in an in a entertaining way, keeping us engaged as to uh, certain moral lessons and perspectives we need to build. Very well said, Eliza. Anyone else? Your favorite short story writers? Why do you like them? Anyone else? Janabi Kashyap there. I saw her responding on the elements of a short story. What are your favorite short story writers? What's your favorite short story? Anybody? Very good, Tagore. Tagore is Tagore's like one of the masters of the short story. And um, if you can read him in the original Bengali, fabulous. If you can read Premchand, again, you're bringing up masters of short fiction who have so beautifully uh, used short fiction to tell us about their cultures, to tell us about moral values, to entertain us, enrich us. So these are fabulous examples. Anybody else? From Meghalaya, from Shillong, have you read any of your local writers? Raskin Bond, again, yes. Again, a fabulous example of very entertaining, very engaging, very meaningful short fiction. Read manga, again. I haven't read manga myself. I'd love to know a little more. But uh, yes, I believe it's, it's very popular, yes. Anyone else? What else have you read? Somerset Mom, fabulous again. Very good um, taste. Manish telling us about Kabir Das, about how he writes uh, with the intent not to hurt other people around us. Very good teaching coming out of short fiction there. Somerset Mom, of course, does need introduction, Moon and Sixpence and other fiction, short stories. Master of the short, short story again. He writes beautifully there. Have you read any of your local writers? Has anybody read writers from Shillong? Have you read any of your short fiction writers, any of your novelists, any of your po poets? Has anyone read? Okay, so um, I'm going to end this. Uh, I'm going to end this uh, session with um, talking about some of my favorite short story writers and. and uh, sort of some recommendations that you can look up if you wish to. So um, we have fabulous writers in India. We have fabulous short fiction writers uh, in regional languages, in English too. And the good thing about now is that a lot of our regional stories are being translated into, into English. So all of us can uh, obtain them. All of us can read them and enjoy them. Uh, we've had Tego mentioned here. We've had Munji Premchand mentioned here. We've had Kabir Das mentioned. Um, we've had the writers in English, Somerset Mom mentioned. Uh, let me take this further. Since we're talking to NIT Shillong, you have fabulous writers in Shillong. You have my friend Janice Pariyat, her very first book, Boats on Land. If you haven't read it, please read it. It's short fiction uh, against the background of the local folk legends and folk tales of, of, of Meghalaya. That's, it's a treat to read that book. Please read it sometime. We have a uh, great novelist from Shillong. You have Anjum Hassan. Uh, you have from Assam, Thruba Hazarika, who writes, writes stories, and novels based in Shillong. Uh, you have Maman Dai, Madam from Arunachal Pradesh, if you want to read more about uh, that part of the country. Her fiction is rooted in that beautiful region. We have from my home state of Assam, you have Mitra Pukan, again, a very skilled, accomplished short story writer and also novelist. Uh, you have Aruni Kasha, short stories and fiction. Um, you have our Assamese writers in translation. You have um, 
Mamani Raisam Goswami, Indira Goswami. You can read any of her novels, any of her short stories, and you will not be disappointed. Um, the rest of the country, we have our legendary writers. We have Salman Rushti, we have Anita Desai, we have Vikram Seth, we have um, Amitabh Ghosh. We have the older generation. You have um, Isma Chuktai, you read her in translation. She used to write in Urdu. You have Premchand we mentioned today. You have Manto. She have a wealth of writers from our past. Internationally, for short fiction, one of my favorites is a lady called Alice Munro. She's a Canadian writer, and she writes only short stories. She doesn't even write novels. She doesn't write longer length. But uh, read her work, and you will not be disappointed. It's uh, every story is like a novel almost. So there are 14 stories in the book. It's like 14 novels compressed into between cover and the two covers. Um, you have writers, of course, the older writers in England. You have, if you want to read. Um, the very best of short story writing is Chekhov, Anton Chekhov from Russia. He was a doctor who went into writing, and what a writer he became, he's legendary. So we have this whole range of writers from regional languages to English to other regional fiction across the world. Um, please do read. Whether you're serious about writing or not, it doesn't matter. Just by the virtue of reading this much, it's going to um, really enrich you in various ways. You may not realize it now, but as you grow older, as you um, go through on the journey of life, you'll find so much wisdom and um, so much enrichment coming from the reading of the works of these of these writers. So I think we almost um, we have about 10 minutes left. And at the end of this, I would like perhaps Shishir and Doliza to interact and some of the audience gathered here to interact and tell me how did you like this? Is there anything else you need to know? Because that's the whole purpose of a workshop is to have a give and take is to have both parties talking to each other. So, Shishiro Saman, take over and let me listen for some time to what you've learned and what you would like to learn further, perhaps. Shishiro, are you there? Can you hear me? And any questions, anything you'd like to learn further, any recommendations? Because this is the best time when you can meet face to face and you know, really use us, ask us what you need to know. Come on, somebody, there's a workshop, so let's get it moving, get that. Ma'am, my one question is. Yes. Uh, ma ma my one question is how to make interest in reading as a <coughs> sorry ma'am when, when I start reading then it becomes bore for me after some time then how to make it interest so do one thing Manish right yes ma'am can you hear me yes so um, I would suggest if you find what you're reading boring just drop it don't read that particular thing pick up something else and if I can suggest pick up some short stories and pick up maybe a book which has short stories by different writers. So that's like, um, uh, you'll, get, you'll have a choice of let's say 11 to 12 writers. So if you don't like one short story, go to the next. If you don't like that, try something else. So try and see if you can sustain your interest by picking up short fiction by different authors. That's what I meant by read widely. See what you like, see what doesn't bore you, see what interests you and see if you can stick with it. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Right, so maybe try an assorted an anthology um, by various writers. See how you like some of them. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Other questions? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, my question is uh, not exactly related to story writing. It is more on the academic side. Mm -hmm. uh, ma'am, sometimes we need to write paragraph writing or essay writing. Yes. So uh, it is usually recommended to make it uh, more interesting and engage the readers. So ma'am, what are your suggestions on that? Uh, I think as far as making things interesting and engaged is that um, try and come to the point. So I, I um, uh, by profession, I'm a medical doctor. Then I got into writing. So I have I know both sides of it. I know academic writing and um, fiction. And I think one thing you need to keep your focus on is to 
uh, be precise, don't be repetitive. So say what you want to say in, in, in one uh, shot. Don't repeat yourself and make sure that your content, make sure what you're writing about is something you really uh, know it well. So when you know a subject well and you present it well, you present it accurately to the point without repetition, you'll find that it gathers more interest than something which is very vague and you're trying to say something you don't know very well about over and over again. Does that make sense, Tanisha? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. More questions? Anyone, just ask whatever you want so we can... It's for the sake of the other students too. So what you ask, then they can also use the answer. Ma'am, one more question about you. How did you come from a medical doctor into writing? Oh, it's a very long story, but to cut it short, um, I took some time off to, uh, after I had, I had a child, and I took some time off to look after the child. Um, the child wasn't well, my son wasn't well, so I took two or three years off to look after him when he was born. And along when I was at home, I anyway read a lot as a child. Uh, I read a lot throughout school, college, medical college days. And I read even more when I was at home. And at that time, I began writing some short fiction. So from writing a few short stories, my path on writing began. Eventually, I didn't go back to medicine. I continued to write. OK. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else with any questions? Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask a final question then. So I want some of you to come up and tell me, did you enjoy the workshop? And what, what are you carrying away from it? What did you learn from the workshop today? I want at least five people to answer me this time. So I feel that I've reached some of you out there. What did you enjoy about the workshop? And what have you learned that you can further carry into your life from this? Anyone? What did you enjoy or not enjoy? And what have you learned? If so, what? Anyone? Okay, so that Kumar said you like the various parts of a short, the elements of a short story you brought out. Okay, so we broke down the short story into little ingredients that you can work on and put it together to make a whole story. Okay, good. Thank you, Vasundara. Enjoyed being here. Vasundara says she enjoyed the experience, got to learn a lot of things. The cooking analogy. Thank you so much, Shivam. That's something I use because I enjoy it myself. It's really writing is sometimes like baking a brownie or baking a cake. You have to get your ingredients right, the measurements right, the timing right, and then you have to bake it and hopefully it will rise into a proper cake. Good, Raj Kedia says he's learned to take an interest in reading. I hope you read more and more after this. Toliza saying she enjoyed this first workshop she came to. I'm so glad. Anyone else? Thank you, Manish. I've taken interest in reading. Yes. I hope you can find some things you're interested in. Ashwini Singh, thank you. Singh learned how to write a good short story. Tanisha Singh, she learned about conflict and climax. Yes, so that technical aspects you need to keep in mind. Yash Raj Gupta Singh, it's interesting to read, learn about reading and writing. Thank you. Janavi Kashyap, the strawberry elements, yes, the ingredients of that cake you have to bake in future, yes. Right, I think we've had a good amount of interaction here. Thank you, Ajit. 
it's nice to have you here too today. Hello, the baby. She enjoyed the workshop. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Right, Shishir. I think we are kind of at the end of our time. Vitraj Dev about how to relate to the story. Yes, Vitraj. Thank you for your interaction. Right. A very good evening to everyone once again. I, Doliza Karlingdor, a convener of the Literary Club, on behalf of the Shishir team, feels immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this workshop with all the dignitaries present here. First and foremost, I would like to thank our honorable speaker, Madam Janvi Barwa, who honored today's workshop with her inspirational and enlightening thoughts. We have learned many things from your talk, Madam, including the short story elements and how to be interested in reading and writing. This event wouldn't have been fortuitous without your kind cooperation. I would also like to thank our director, sir, and all faculties for giving us this opportunity to host today's event. My heartfelt thanks also goes to our faculty in charge, Dr. Tanmar Bose, for his dedication in today's workshop. My thanks also goes to the whole literary club team for making this event what it is today. And a special thank also goes to the Shishi team for everything they have done to this and make this workshop to happen in a successful way. Last but not the least, I would like to thank our beloved audience for making this event a grand success. I hope you all have learned many new things from this workshop and have a fun. Once again, I thank one and all present here. I am aware of the theme concerning the workshop. We had a great time having you all. Looking forward to many more such workshops, engaging more people and on a greater level. To conclude, I wish you all great success in life. Thank you. Thank you so much for those kind words, Lisa. Thank you, NIT, Meghalaya, uh, everybody who was involved in organizing this. And thank you so much for the audience for being so patient and um, so engaged. Thank you so much for this interaction. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all.